Okay. Uh, I, I, I went to a little higher Reynolds number to get some more data on this home-built airplane I was building and build a car top wind tunnel. Did this in 67. We'd usually go out at night when the, when the winds were down and we found out that that dart station wagon actually was a different car than this. I just set this up for the picture. Uh, and we, we could get it up to about 85 or 90 and uh, with this rig on the top. And uh, what we're doing with this is we're using radio control to move the rudders and the ailerons and the elevators. And the model is sitting on a, on a, a spherical bearing, just a big rod end. So it would trim to an angle of attack. It would trim to a side slip. And I had springs on roll so that I could measure by how much it moved what the roll moment is. But I let it trim to a to a side slip angle and to an elevate and to an angle of attack just directly and I could move that ball bearing forward and aft for different CGs. And it provided the aerodynamic data that gave me confidence to go out and build my own home built airplane of this weird configuration. And and you know I I look back on that now and it says, you did what? <laughs> That was it, guys. Uh, I had no CFD to speak of. I had, you know, just hand calculations on lift and drag and, and so on. And this little guy racing down the road gave me enough confidence that I could build this airplane uh, and, and have my own little fighter airplane. Weird. Uh, the fabrication methods, again, I. I, I didn't find a booth here selling balsa wood, which I think is a damn shame. Uh, you guys still build with balsa wood? Yeah. I mean, all these things that are prefab, I mean, how's kid going to learn to build something new if he doesn't buy balsa wood? Okay. How many here remember the cost of a 36-inch by 3-inch by 1 16th inch piece of balsa wood? That's the most popular size we'd buy, right? How much did it cost? 16 cents. Uh, but anyway, I built the very big and kind of like we built balsa wood models, except I used Sitka spruce and uh, birch plywood and glued it and stapled it all together. There's this new thing that came in that was really a good way to attach wood to itself. It's called epoxy. Yes. And... and uh, so, you know, that was a big deal. I built it out, I, I built it out of epoxy. Okay, now, I'd finished the very vegan and got it almost ready to fly in 1971. Okay, it wasn't painted yet. And my boss sent me to St. Louis. And I was there for four or five months. I was there to do the flight test planning for the stability and control flight test of the F-15 fighter. Okay, right in the middle of the Vietnam War, this was this real far out new generation fighter and I had to go to St. Louis, TDY, for four or five months. Okay, and I was gonna stay there until almost the time at which the F-15 was ready to make its first flight. Well, <laughs> I did two, real interesting things while I was there at TDY in St. Louis. One, I met this gorgeous girl who was, who was a computer programmer who was working at McDonnell Douglas at flight test, and she had a couple of kids and I married her, okay? <laughs> the other interesting thing I did while I was there on that trip is I, uh, I decided that I ought to build a radio control model of this airplane that I had back home being painted and just see how it flew radio control. I only had this wind tunnel data on it. That'd be a good thing to learn. Uh, if this thing was safe to fly, I'd build an RC model. Now, in those days, I hadn't flown RC since, since uh, the early 60s when we had just this beep beep stuff, not proportional, okay? So I bought this stuff and uh, I just went out and found a local hobbyist who was a good RC pilot. And I said, you're gonna fly this thing so we can do some flight tests. All right, now keep in mind, I had already built this airplane, okay? 
And I had it ready to fly it. I was going to, as soon as I get home back to, back to Edwards at Lancaster, I'm going to make the first flight on this home built airplane. So now, let's see how the RC model flies. It had a 60 in it. I'm not explaining all the reason, but the thing wouldn't rotate, and when it did, it would die. Whoa, it did a snap roll. And my new wife is thinking, you're going to fly this? Okay, there it is. Yeah, not a real good flight. Okay, finally, we got it off the ground. Okay. And, you know, once it was up and away, it flew pretty good, but I crashed it about six times trying to get it airborne. Oh, there's Carolyn. Yeah. And then I found, well, the big problem was a bouncy runway with the grass, so we hand launched it. Whoa! It would usually hit the ground after you did that, but I showed the successful one in here. But anyway, here is now I finally have confidence maybe this thing won't kill me after all. Here's a triple aileron roll. It was a big deal in, in those days. And I didn't get a picture of the crash, but I am going to show you the last flight of the, of the very big and RC model. Here it goes. Yep, that's it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> a few months later, I was getting ready to fly this airplane, and I ended up taking a job and quitting my Air Force job and going to Kansas. So I put this airplane in a moving van. The outer wing panels came out and stacked my my furniture and belongings around it, and off it went to Kansas. Now I'm in Kansas, and I'm ready to fly the Variavigan for the first time. What you're going to see here is all of the initial testing of the Variavigan, the initial taxi test and uh, everything. I, I just kind of had a box around the, the uh, engine. I didn't build a cowling yet. There's nose wheel liftoff. Good, unlike the model airplane, it does rotate. That was good news. Here, I, I put just a little bit of air under the tires, and here's a runway flight. Good, doesn't look like it'll kill me. I'll go ahead and, and uh, set it down and then do a, do a real flight. And there I am, flew it. I flew it until it was almost dark. gear up, and a landing. So anyway, that was kind of cool. Now, I did this on a Sunday. Oh, this was later. And uh, here I am celebrating the fact I'm still alive. Yeah. Yeah.